Hello, my friends, and welcome back to the Review Den. And all right, okay, I get it. The original, the first Top Gun video game may not have been the pinnacle of video entertainment. I always find it cool to look at all the ports of a game. Yes, even the ones nobody else on YouTube covers, played by someone who actually can play them, rather than a 10-year-old clip of someone sitting in the menus for 90% of the videos. But I get it. I really do. I understand. Do you? But don't go losing that loving feeling, we're about to catapult into a much more exciting and better known Top Gun game that better represents the movie, or movies now, quite nicely. Yes, it's Konami's 1987 Top Gun for the 8-bit NES. Ocean Software made a unique attempt at Top Gun which focused on 1v1 training fights between Tomcat pilots, but it wasn't really uh, that good or true to the Hollywood action that gamers were expecting. Ocean is a fine company and made some perfectly decent movie tie-ins, but it just wasn't a good fit here. So Konami swaggered into the room, peered over Ocean's shoulder, saying, Are you winning, son? and took over development for the next few titles. And honestly, they made a pretty good attempt here. The sequel and handheld aren't overly known or praised, but this 1987 outing is a pretty iconic game among the NES's library. The fast-paced action, the bright orange cockpit, the deadly missiles, and infamous carrier landings all made for an exciting flight game that anyone could play, few could master, but everyone remembers. Okay, according to the manual, you, Maverick I assume, are training at Fighter Town, USA. Hey, I guess he did become an instructor. When the call comes in. <laughs> His face is ice cold. The enemy, who, has invaded vital oil fields and is targeting US allies. All right, so it's off to the USS Enterprise with us to lead the counteroffensive. Hit start, and after an appropriately sun-baked liftoff, there we go, like the blowers, we're into the first mission. Now, even though we're in the cockpit this time, the action is pretty similar to Afterburner. This is a simple into-the-screen action flight game where you're tasked with taking out enemies and staying alive. Not necessarily in that order. You have basic control over flight direction, but don't have to worry about altitude or crashing or anything. Well, not during combat anyway. For offense, you have guns, which are unlimited, and homing missiles, which are. Unfortunately, the game doesn't feature auto fire, so a turbo controller is a big help here. But regardless, you'll want to keep a close eye on your targeting box. Not only is this the area where you can missile lock enemies, but it's your hitbox as well. And trust me, this is crucial. Top Gun only gives three lives for the entire game, so you're going to need to dodge enemy fire. The first mission features only airborne targets, so it's good for a warm-up, but the later three introduce plenty of ships, missile launchers, and tanks, so you'll have to deal with threats both above and below the horizon. And honestly, the game has a nice flow to it, shooting down as many enemies as possible while dodging their shots. Ground targets have a good deal more hit points than planes, so it's a good habit to dive and fire off a few missiles, then climb up to avoid fire or gun down a few planes. Rinse and repeat. Every once in a while, an enemy will lock onto your tail, but you can shake him off by swinging him side to side until you're clear. Not to get sidetracked, but this game would have been perfect for the NES Advantage. It had a nice eight-way joystick and both buttons had individual turbo fire dials to adjust the button speed. And it had a big weighted base. It was a big controller. We had one years ago and yeah, just think about it, that would have been perfect for this. But uh, yeah, sorry, odd tangent. For content, the game features four missions, and while this sounds limited, the missions themselves are quite long, more on that in a second, and offer a nice variety. You get a quick briefing before each describing your targets and can choose a loadout. Word to the wise, you won't do much damage to ground targets with the weaker missiles, so starting with mission two, you might want to go with something more powerful and use your guns on enemy aircraft. Mission 1 is an air-to-air -air scuffle, fun and simple. Mission 2 has you taking on an enemy armada, ending with a carrier. Mission 3 has you over the desert, taking on SAM sites and missile bases. And Mission 4 has you saving the world from a secret rocket base, complete with sea, land, and nighttime mini-stages. As I mentioned, the levels are quite long, but the good news is you can refuel and rearm once per mission. Just call in a tanker when fuel is critical, and you're treated to a minigame where you have to line 
line up the refueling boom with your aircraft. Just speed up until the boom is on the X and you aren't above or below. Really cool. I mean, it's totally wrong. The Air Force uses the flying boom and the Navy uses a basket and hose, but still, brown star for effort. Sorry, I have to get those in. Throughout the game, you'll be getting points for enemies destroyed, reach 50,000 points to get a plaque for being the titular top gun, and if you manage to get all the way through and destroy the enemy's satellite rocket facility, you'll have saved the world from nuclear annihilation. War. It's fantastic. Here's a cutscene of you landing. I hope it was worth it. Now, if all of this sounds good, yeah, the game really does play fun. At first. The problem is just how impossibly hard it becomes. See, gunfire can down you in just a few shots. Multiple hits and guess who ends up in the recycling bin. But missiles are an instant kill, so you'll need to learn avoidance and learn it fast. Really, this is the biggest part of the game. The secret to both Afterburner and Top Gun is you don't succeed by shooting down enemies. You succeed by surviving. It's not like shmups where you need to clear a path or collect power-ups. Now, each of the stages after the first one do feature a final boss that needs to be destroyed, but otherwise it's about staying alive. Gunfire is pretty easy to dodge, just steer away even if it means letting go of a target. But enemy missiles track you, which makes a whole new challenge. You can gun down single missiles, but once the enemy starts shooting triples, yeah, the game is not kidding anymore. The safe bet is to gun down one or two and hopefully dodge the third, but this is inconsistent at best. If you're out of position, it may be too difficult to dodge, so get used to seeing those fiery bowling balls in your face. It's frustrating too. Most of the game follows a good risk versus reward of downing enemies for points while avoiding enemy fire. But as soon as they lob those three shots of missiles, it's really a dice roll if you'll survive. And all of that's not even the most notorious part of the game. Turns out Maverick's biggest enemy isn't the enemy. Who, who are we fighting? It's gravity. Yeah, anyone who knows this game knows about the carrier landings. After each mission, you'll have to land back on the carrier, and even for someone who grew up on flight sims, this is nasty. You have to be lined up correctly, meaning no landing officer instructions flashing at you, and you have to be close to the ideal airspeed and altitude. You have control over speed now, as well as altitude and attitude, or where you're pointed, and all three influence each other. That's fine too, that's correct. The problem is that they influence each other all wrong. You climb only when accelerating regardless of your speed, so you wind up tap tap tapping the A button to stay around 290 while trying to adjust your altitude with the direction. It's all counterintuitive, and if even one element is wrong, you crash and lose a life. Yeah, you don't just lose the bonus points, you lose one of your three lives for the entire game. Just imagine saving the world from World War III and then lawn darting into the ocean. Thankfully, there is some leeway, so I'm not ashamed to admit there were a few times I landed, but I landed ugly. And before anyone comments, yes, there is a dirty little trick to the game. Not the landings, that's practice and luck. But for the game proper, you can survive by flying away from everything. Yeah, just climb up and to the right, and aside from the odd bokey on your six and maybe an unlucky missile, the enemies won't be able to get any shots on you, and you can just bypass everything. It may help you win, but it kind of breaks the game, like fundamentally. The fun should be feeling like a badass and taking down the enemy forces whoever they are, so it'd be nice if the game was just made more balanced rather than holding down right for an hour. And the frustrating thing is, this really could have been fixed by just adding a few continues. Letting you start a later stage over, even with just the three lives, would have made things more doable. But hey, this is back when Nintendo Hard actually meant Nintendo Hard. All right, were there any ports and versions? Well, yes. There are some minor regional differences, as well as a, shall we say, strongly adjusted version for the arcade versus machines. Top Gun is one of the very few games that released in the US before the Japanese Famicom, so there are some updates that the West didn't get. The Japanese version features slightly more detailed carrier graphics when you're catapulting and landing. The music is switched around so you get music during the mission and only sound effects when you're refueling. The US version has it the other way around. Refueling adds a more obvious color warning when you are above or below the target. You get a cool graphic of the tally marks on your plane after missions. You get an extra life on reaching 50,000 points, which is very helpful. 
And lastly, the briefing map is changed to round, which is weird actually. The original version shows what I assume is the Arabian Sea, which in 1987 would coincide with the Iran-Iraq War, while the Japanese port looks like the Aegean Sea? I'm not sure. And to be honest, I'm probably reading too deep into an 8-bit game, but hey, unlike all those other channels, I actually go that deep into this kind of stuff. The real interesting port, however, is the Nintendo Versus version. Top Gun is one of several Nintendo titles brought to arcades in the surprisingly successful Versus line of arcade conversions. And like those, it has a rather noticeable difficulty spike along with some minor cosmetic changes. The minor updates are all here from the Japanese version as well as a slightly different color palette for the run-up and completion cutscenes, although the map returns to its original version. The takeoff and landing sequences are hugely sped up to keep focus on the action, but the biggest difference is the difficulty. Oh, okay, all those other channels that we all watched that thought that the home version was hard? Yeah, pucker up. See, one of the reasons the home game let you get away with flying up and right was because the missile shots only spawned when an enemy was on screen. Here, the game constantly spawns three-shot missiles at you just from nowhere, so you have to dodge or shoot every few seconds. You also have to de-louse your tail, and the bogeys are much harder to shake. You have to swing them as far to the sides as possible, or else they just glue themselves to you and shoot you down. All of this leaves little time for downing enemies, so any complaints about the original game having gaps between enemy waves don't apply here. In fact, I wonder if the home game was made to have all these extra enemies, but was later toned down to make things more doable. Well, what about extra lives, though? As an arcade game, surely you can just pump quarters in to keep things going. Well, the Defense Department may be powered by quarters in this game. You can stock up to 12 lives, unless the arcade owner is a real jerk, but don't expect them to last very long. As I mentioned, those missile shots are a dice roll if you'll survive, and with them popping up every few seconds, get used to using all 12 of those lives on later stages. Overall, Top Gun is a fun, tough, iconic game for the NES. It's perfect for an hour or two of blasting down bogeys and seeing how far you get compared to your last run. But for completionists or modern day gamers, this one takes no prisoners. I still stand by my statement that Afterburner is the true Top Gun video game, but this is still a blast and was a good choice for home users in the 80s. Maverick would return to the NES in a lesser known but still action-packed sequel, but for now, thank you all so much for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you, and if you'd like to help a small channel grow or appreciate the extra bit of work I put into my videos, would you be my next subscriber? I'll be back with another review, and no matter what, be sure to keep going. Because you are worth it.